And today I'm going to be preaching on a, on a very important subject. But first, before I get started, Paul, would you get me the, uh, the, the bucket for the drawing? And uh, uh, I want to go ahead and we're going to do that first drawing really fast. And then I'm going to get into uh, the word of the Lord that God has for us today. Uh, so all of you know, we do have two campuses. Uh, there's this campus here in Oxnard, and then the other campus is in Ventura. It's at 405 Jordan Avenue. And uh, typically we have service here at 930, and then we have service over there at 10, uh, 1045. So we'd love for you to join us on a weekly basis, and we have awesome children's ministry at both locations. Thank you. Uh, we have great children's ministry at both locations. And uh, because we believe in taking care of children, we believe in, in blessing children, we believe children are not only our future, but they're also our present. And how many know the children have a rough time right now, amen? I mean, it's pretty rough out there in school and, and in no school and, and friends, and then you can't be around your friends and, and educationally and just all the stuff thrown at them on the internet. It's, it's pretty crazy a lot of times. And uh, we want to be there and be a blessing to them. And so uh, I am uh, just uh, stirring these up, and uh, so I'm going to give away um, $100. Who wants to draw it? Who wants to be the one to draw this? Julia. Julia. Julia just uh, volunteered. I heard her. Yeah. Uh, so uh, there you go. You can't look now. Okay, so go ahead. Draw. I'm sure. What if this? Uh, <laughs> Watch her draw her own. <laughs> All right. Here we go. It is... Well, it's too, okay, all right. We'll take it for next time. I'm gonna do another one later. Here we go, put that one back in there. All right, and the winner is Stacy Ramirez. Stacy, yeah. Stacy, if you don't, is Stacy in here? Okay, come on, uh, if you don't mind, uh, go ahead here. I'm gonna give you that back to them, please, so they can do that. Um, and uh, come on up here, Stacy. I'm gonna get this to you here. And uh, we want to, uh, like I said, we, I want to bless you, and uh, maybe you can help somebody get some uh, school uniform or clothes or something, all right? You very You're very welcome. God bless you, all right? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. All right, then. Uh, you know what? I believe God is a giver, amen? God is a giver. It says in the most famous verse in the Bible, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave. Love and giving is central to who God is. You know, I know that uh, in the world we have a lot of trouble going on, it seems like, sometimes. There's lots of things happening that, you know, seem to be hurtful and troubling. And uh, there are things that uh, have seemed to have shaken our world. Today I'm going to share a short message about, uh, about freedom. Freedom. Not necessarily the kind of freedom that we receive as Americans, even though that is a great freedom. I don't know if many of you have gotten an opportunity to be in other countries, but you appreciate the freedoms that are in America when you go other places. Yes, there's cost to freedom. And yes, sometimes people do bad things with their freedom. How many know that to be true, right? With freedom, there comes responsibility for people to act right and do right. That's true. But overall, I'm very grateful for the freedoms that I have as an American. But the kind of freedom that I'm talking about today is the kind of freedom that comes to your soul. The kind of freedom that comes to your mind. The kind of freedom that comes to your heart. Whether you don't feel frustrated with every day. Whether you don't feel angry with other people. Whether that you don't live in a sense of perpetual, uh, uh, you know, just frustration of what to do and where to go and how to do it and, 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 and just so upset about all that has happened around you or feeling this sense of, 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 of desperateness and, and, and the sense of loneliness and the sense of th this thing is not going to turn around. I've been in those situations. How many of you have? We've been there whether we think the situation will not turn around. It will never get any better. Things will not look up. It seems like I'm going to be in this pit forever. I'm in this bad marriage and my marriage is all messed up. My children are running wild and I don't know how to control them. My job is, is a dead end and I'm not making enough money or I don't even know if I'm going to have a job tomorrow. Rent is due and I don't know what to do about it. There's no food in the refrigerator and we're frustrated and feeling lost. Anyone ever been there? I have. 
And don't get me wrong, those things still happen in your life if you act on what I preach on today. But the difference is that there's this sense of, of, of trust. There's this sense of, but God. Can everybody say that? But God. <laughs> life may look like it's going to end and end quickly, but God. Amen? There's this sense that I can get a new start in my life. Today I want to share with you about how to get a, a fresh new start. Yes, it'll take some sacrifice on your part. Yes, it takes time. Yes, it'll take you doing things that God's Word says to do. And yeah, I know people don't like to, you know, do things that, that others tell them to do in our society. I know we think we can, should be able to just be free and do what we want because we live in America, right? But how many know that even to keep the freedom, there is responsibility? And so today, I want to help I want, to, I want to help you understand how to get healing, how to bring back hope, how to have hope again, how to have a future again, how to think about having a life. And then, believe me, you know what can happen? Not only will you get a new start and not only will you get healing, but if you'll grab a hold of what I have to share with you today, I believe you can bring healing to other people. How many believe that? Today is one of the most powerful acts of human being can experience. One of the most powerful things that can both you can experience as an individual. One of the most powerful things that, uh, that, that bring uh, wonderful blessings into other people's lives when you give it. Because not only do you have the power to ask for it, you also have the power to give it. I wondering what's the subject today. The subject is forgiveness. Forgiveness is one of the most powerful acts that any person, human being on the earth, and believe me, when God gives forgiveness, it's an eternal blessing. Most of us here will probably live 70, 80 years, 90, 100 nowadays. Some of you young people might live to be 120 with the advancements in our in our, in our medicines and the way we live our lives and who knows what, how long on this earth you're going to live. But I'm here to tell you that is nothing compared to the eternity that awaits you after the 120 years. Forever is a long time. And I plan on living forever. What? Because I have received forgiveness and because I have given forgiveness, I believe that forgiveness becomes Part of what God wants for me for my entrance into heaven. Most importantly, you know, we've got to ask for that forgiveness. We've got to receive that forgiveness. We've got to believe in our heart that Jesus was raised from the dead. And, uh, you know, these things are important. We'll talk a little more about that later. But the forgiveness is a big part of what we're talking about today. I want us to turn today to Matthew chapter 18. And I want to read a, a very powerful story today in uh, Matthew chapter 18. And we're gonna uh, we're gonna start with verse twenty one. It is on the screen. I hope you brought your uh, Bibles with you today. But we're gonna we're gonna start with it here. It says, "Then Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times." He used that because that was a teaching that he had learned uh, in the previous in his previous teachings under the, the laws and those kind of things. So the uh, seven times. I know that as a child, I would ask my parents, how many times do I have to forgive my brothers? I mean, they keep messing up, doing stupid things. Anyone else think their brothers and sisters do stupid things? And then, how many times do I have to forgive them? They do it over and over. They keep doing it. They're mean. They're, they're hurtful. How many times do I have to forgive them? Seven times? Well, that seems like a lot to me, but I could, I could do it seven times. That's cool. No, not seven times, Jesus replied, but 70 times seven. Holy smokes. Who wants to tell me how much, besides Pastor Gene, who wants to tell me what 70 times seven is? 490 times. Got ourselves a mathematician up here. Hey. <laughs> 490 times. You know how you do that fast? Just so you know, you just do the 7 and 7 is 49 and that is 0. That's all. Pretty simple stuff. All right. So the, the, the thing is that it's 490 times, right? 
That's a whole lot of times. But you know what the real point of what Jesus was saying? He wasn't saying keep record. And once they get to 490 times, then you know what? You're free. Condemn them to hell and hate their guts. That wasn't what he was saying. He was saying it's really unlimited. So anyway, let's move on. So he asked this question. So then Jesus tells a story. Jesus, therefore, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his accounts up to date with the servants who had borrowed money from him. So there was this kingdom, there was this king, and, and he has a lord over his property, and he had these servants under people who worked for him. It's just the different terms for, for back then, a little different system, but different terms. And point is, his employee had borrowed money. His servants had borrowed money, had borrowed things from him. And so he decided it was time for me to look at the books and make an actual real push for payment. In the process... Of one, I uh, interesting. In the process, one of his debtors was brought in who owed him millions of dollars. Wow, back then that's a lot of money. This guy owed the guy a lot of money. I find it interesting. He tells the story about one of them. How many servants did the guy have? We don't really know, to be honest with you. But if he had a servant that he had loaned, like what would be today, millions to? I guarantee you he was a rich man and he had a bunch of servants. How many probably agree with me? I wonder how many servants he, that came in but didn't do what this guy said. That's kind of an interesting thought you want to think about. But this servant, he couldn't pay. So his master ordered that he be sold, along with his wife, his children, and everything he owned. So it was almost like, okay, you can't pay it, then I'm going to sell you to someone else. And I know we don't believe in that, and we don't do that today. That was back in those days, and those things happened. The point he was trying to make here was that he would, he would get any amount of money he could uh, and just sell everything he owned. It would be kind of like your boss saying, listen, we're, we're going to have to sell your car. We're going to sell your, if you've got a house, a house. We're going to sell all your furniture, and I'm going to get paid back, at least part of it. To pay the debt. But the man fell down before his master and begged him, please be patient with me and I will pay it all. <coughs> then his master was filled with pity for him and he released him and forgave his debt. Wow. What a beautiful story. Can you imagine if you owed somebody lots of money, if you owned millions of dollars, if you owed me millions of dollars? And then you came and I said, I want my money. And you said, I don't have your money. And I, I'd say, well, you're going to get thrown in jail till I sell everything you got and I'm going to take your money. And you get down on your knee and you say, please forgive me. I want my debt forgiven. And I said, it is all erased because I got touched in my heart that you asked for forgiveness. There are many different characters here in this story. I think it's a very beautiful story if you really want to know the truth, the truth of it. I think that one of the most important part, and you can, you can see me I, 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 as the debtor. I'm the debtor. I've been a debtor. I'm a debtor now. I owe some people some money. How many of you own a car? You're in debt to the bank, right, if you don't own it completely. Fortunately, mine's paid off right now. I'm very grateful. But the, the, the thing is that I'm a debtor. Every month I pay to my landlord money. I'm a debtor. I owe probably right now, I think I saw that my electric bill is, is, is due. So I'm a debtor for my electric bill. I'm a debtor. I owe a bunch of money to uh, my student loans. I'm in debt. Believe me, it might be close to a million dollars. No, I'm teasing, but it feels like a million dollars. You know what I mean? But the thing is that I'm a debtor. And, you know, as a debtor, I feel sometimes, man, it's overwhelming. I feel so trapped by the, the things that I've done, the decisions that I've made. You, I'm sure, can identify with the debtor today of owing something, of you owe something, that you have been broken, that you have been, uh, uh, that you have, you've done things that were wrong. I've done things that were wrong even to people before. I've gotten angry and done things I shouldn't have done. I, 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 I've done things that, that I, I shouldn't have done even in when I thought I was thinking clear. Anyone else ever do something like that? Sure we have. 
That's how this guy was. He was a debtor. He had borrowed it. He had lived on it. He had done whatever he did, but he was a debtor. And then we have in the story, we have the one that is the forgiver, right? The forgiver. In this story, that's the, 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 the Lord of the house, or the, or, or, I mean, the, the, um, the one, what does it call him? It calls him uh, the master, I think. But anyway, the point is that he's the, the forgiver. The forgiver is important. The one who says, you know what? <clears throat> I'm not going to get anything back from it, really. Uh, I don't know what to do, but I'm moved, and I'm going to forgive you. Forgiver is a very powerful place to be as well. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a moment. And then there is what makes this story beautiful, the forgiven. Hallelujah. The forgiven. Now, all of us honestly have played a part in being one of these people in our life. Throughout our life, maybe even at the same exact time, we are either, we can either be the one who is the debtor, we can be the one that is the forgiver, and we can be the one that is the forgiven. But the point is to understand that forgiveness plays a big part in our life. I think about it first and foremost, and this is such a beautiful story, because forgiveness was given. How many think that forgiveness is a beautiful thing? Especially when you're receiving it. Tell your neighbor, I like to receive forgiveness. You can tell me because you're not going to be sitting by it. Amen. <laughs> All right. I like to receive forgiveness. I like forgiveness. Forgiveness is a beautiful thing. I remember <clears throat> when I've asked for forgiveness before and, and thrown myself on the mercy of the court. I was a, I was a 12 year old kid, I remember, and I was the assistant pastor's son. And I was a little wild sometimes when I was 12 years old and younger. This is probably one of the oldest bad stories I have about myself. Because by the age of 13, God called me to preach and I pretty much straightened up pretty good. But when I was 12, I still was a, a little bit wild and, 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 and I, I, I loved magnets. And I had this magnet that I loved. It was a bigger magnet. And, and, and I loved what you could do with magnets and science. And, and I was creating these little things. But anyway, the point is I loved magnets. I don't know why, but I did. And so I had this one big magnet. And uh, I was at church one night like this. We were having a family night, fun day, movie, whatever. And uh, people were hanging out. I was outside with a couple of my friends. And I had that magnet. And I got bored just playing with it and stuff. So I took it and I threw it at the bus. Going to stick it on the side of the bus. You know, threw it and stack. And I thought, oh, that was cool. And I stepped back a little further, right? And I, wow, look at that smack. It threw back a little further. And all of a sudden, poosh, it went through the window. Oh, no. I thought for sure I was in trouble. And believe me, being forgiven for it wasn't even close to the top of the list that I was concerned about at that point. I was concerned about the spare the rod, spoil the child scripture. You know what I mean? I was concerned about the grounding. I was concerned about all the lawns I'd have to mow to fix that window. I mean, there was so much going on, not only the embarrassment of the stupidity. But so all the other couple of kids are with me. They took off. I went and got my magnet. Want to make sure I cover my tracks, right? No, no fingerprints left, right? <laughs> also, I start thinking like a you know criminal. But anyway, so I get my magnet and I leave, and, and I didn't say a word about it. I normally told him myself a lot of times. I thought I'd say a word. I was scared to death. Well, all of a sudden, the pastor come to me and said, "Bobby, I heard something went on in the parking lot." And I'm like, "Oh no!" One of those other narc. I mean, I'm sorry. One of those other kids told on me. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it was my brother. He was one of them. But anyway, so he asked me about it. I said, I don't know what you're talking about, Pastor. He goes, well, let's go outside. I lied to him then. We went outside, and, and he looks at it. He goes, I go, wow, that's horrible. Who would do that to the church bus? <laughs> Digging deeper and deeper. Anyone ever been there? Sure we have. The point I'm trying to make today is that I had done that, and I needed forgiveness. I wasn't going to get forgiveness by denying it. I wasn't going to get forgiveness by blaming it on other people. I wasn't going to get forgiveness by hiding from it. I wasn't going to be get forgiveness by wishing it didn't exist. Is that true? I was going to get forgiveness in one way, and that was that I was going to ask from the one who could forgive me to forgive me. And he was going to become the forgiver. Now, 
I've been the forgiver many times. I'm much, there's some things that are harder to forgive than others. Don't get me wrong. But I prefer to be the forgiver than the one asking for the forgiveness. But there are some things that are harder. This story, though, is like mine. So I said, I, yes, I had done it. I admitted to it. I asked him to forgive me, and please don't tell my parents. Right? Well, he told me he forgave me, but my parents needed to know. So they were told I paid the price, and we all took care of it. Right? We're not going to talk about it because you put my parents in jail, and they're pastors. So, you know, they whipped me pretty good. You know what I mean? So the point is that, uh, uh, that forgiveness is a powerful thing. And this story, this is a beautiful story. And I'm here to tell you today that all of you need forgiveness. All of you have a debt. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, it says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Everyone, I think I quoted the right one, I wrote it 310. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There it is, I did say the right one. So the point is that all of them sin. You see, forgiveness, it starts with realizing you've done something wrong. You have to realize you've done something that needs forgiveness. If you're thinking you're perfect, that you're not as bad as everybody else, if you're making excuses for what you did, if you're saying, you know what, they're more messed up than I am, then you're really not going to get it. Forgiveness starts with saying, I know I've sinned. Why does sin hurt God so much? Because you're choosing to not listen to God. You're choosing to listen to the enemy. And, and therefore, God thinks you're, God knows you're choosing sides. In the sense, the wrong side. Sin is important. Now, we, can't, we don't go sinless necessarily. Sinless is hard. But God is saying to us that he wants you to be repentive of what you've done. Ask for forgiveness. Admit you sinned. Admit you made a mistake. Admit you need forgiveness. That's the beginning of forgiveness. Then, of course, asking for it, repenting, and, and, then, and then make it a true commitment for, to not do it again and not walk down that path. That's what happened in this story here that I just read to you. It was a beautiful thing. The man throws him to the mercy. I know I borrowed the money. I know I was wrong, but I don't have it to pay back. Please forgive me. And forgiveness was given to him. What a beautiful story. Today, all of you, the Bible says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, I'm not talking about confessing every sin. Believe me, I'd be here a long time if I tried to confess all my sins. How many got a bunch of them as well? Right? He doesn't expect us to name it. Yeah, that time I, uh, you know, stole this, lied, yelled, got angry. I mean, you don't have to, all that. It's saying, God, forgive me for my acts against you and against your Bible. I ask you to forgive me for the things I've done wrong against people and you. And, and, and Lord, I, I, I make a commitment to not do that again. And I ask for your forgiveness. And then Jesus forgives us. So number one today, I want you to realize that all of us need forgiveness and we need to ask for forgiveness. But number two today is found kind of, and number two is that this in this story is also the power of the one who forgives. Being willing to forgive others is important. So, you know what, in your life, maybe somebody has done, I, I'm not maybe, people have done bad things to you. Some of you sitting here today, people have done really bad stuff to you. Sometimes it's your husband, your wife, your children, your neighbors, a teacher. People have done bad stuff to you. Things that do not deserve to be forgiven. They've hurt you. They've abused you, they've bruised you, they've messed up your life, they've stolen your money, they've hurt your family. <clears throat> I understand that. I've got, I've had people hurt me at levels, I, they don't deserve to be forgiven. But you know what? I deserve to be free from that hatred. I deserve to be free from that pain of thinking about it all the time. I deserve to be set free and have a new life. This, this, this you know what? The point is today that it, it, God says that if you forgive others, then he can forgive you. But if you don't forgive others, then you will not be forgiven. That's crazy, isn't it? You can 
have a brand new life, I promise you. I know it's hard to forgive. I know it's hard to move on. I know it's hard. I'm not telling you. And sometimes it's too early and you can't quite do it. But I'm telling you as a person that has learned to walk in forgiveness, that is such a beautiful thing to let the stuff go. To leave those people in God's hands and let God take care of it. It is a beautiful, set me free, live a happy life, a joyful life. It is so powerful. Because the lack of forgiveness creates even worse things. Let's look at the next part of this passage in, in Matthew chapter 18, starting in verse 20, I believe it's 28. Then his master was filled with pity, and he released him and forgave his debt. But when the man left, so we're talking about the man that was forgiven, when the man left, the king, he went to a fellow servant who owed him a few thousand dollars. He grabbed him by the throat. Holy smokes, this guy's aggressive. And demanded instant payment. He walked up to the guy, put his hand out on his throat, grabbed his throat and says, you owe me money, I want my money. But the man, felt that, but his fellow servant fell down before and begged for a little more time. Be patient with me. I will pay it, he pleaded. This is a very familiar story, isn't it? So the man's in with the king. The king, he gets on his knees. Please forgive me. The king says, wow, okay, you're forgiven. The man goes outside, sees somebody owes him money, grabs him by the throat, says, pay me now. The man drops down on his knees, and he says, oh, please forgive me. How many of you ever here have been forgiven for anything? If you've been forgiven for something, raise your hand. All of us have. All of us have been forgiven for something. I mean, it's crazy to think about this horrible part of the story. What a horrible person. <laughs> That's a horrible person, isn't it? When you look at it from the perspective of somebody else's, uh, of us watching it. But if we think about it in terms, but you don't understand, Pastor. I was forgiven of something, but still... That person there did something a lot worse. I don't have very much money. I can't let that go. Uh, he messed up my whole life. You know, I don't, you don't understand. You know, but this story, we look at it, that's a horrible man. How could he do that? When some of the other servants saw this, okay. Uh, oh, wait a minute, I didn't finish this. Be patient with me, blah, blah, blah. He had the man arrested and put in prison until the debt could be paid in full. Wow. When some of the other servants saw this, they were very upset. They went to the king and told him everything that had happened. Then the king called in the man and had forgiven, uh, that he had forgiven and said, You evil servant, I forgave you that tremendous debt because you pleaded with me. Shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you? Then the angry king sent the man to prison to be tortured. Holy smokes. Until he had paid his entire debt. That's uh, what my heavenly father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and your sister from your heart. So the point here is that God's trying to get us to understand. In reality, it, yes, sin separates you from God. If you don't forgive other people, then you are sinning. The point is, he's saying, I want you to be free. There's such beauty in forgiving others. Amen? I want you to be set free today. I want you to forgive. I want you to repent. I'm telling you, I live a life of forgiveness. You need to practice forgiveness. You've got to start with the small things sometimes. You've got to practice it every day. In my life, I do pretty well with forgiveness now. I do. I'm a pastor. I'm supposed to. It's like I'm a professional at it. You know what I mean? That was a joke. But the point is that that we, we are, I try, I do pretty well with it though. I can forgive pretty quickly, unless you do something like really bad, like, you know, say you're gonna beat me in fantasy football, because you ain't got no chance, you know what I mean? Hell, oh, anyway. All right, so he told me he's gonna beat me, you know, I mean, he's not gonna beat me in fantasy football, no. No, I can forgive, I can forgive even bigger, badder, worse things pretty quickly. Let me tell you something forgiveness is the beginning of your new life.
So I encourage you to do that. But the other thing I want to say in conclusion, we need to forgive ourselves. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself for the mistakes you've made, for the stupid things you've done. Let it go. Quit rerunning it in your head all the time. You, we, we've got to learn to forgive ourselves as well. Give yourself a break. So you messed up. Start doing right. Start planting good seed. Start going back to God's house. Start reading the Bible. Start being good to people. Start forgiving people. Start over where you're at. If you will do these things, if you will recognize you need to be forgiven and ask forgiveness, if you will recognize you need to give forgiveness to those that have hurt you, and if you will forgive yourself for the stupid things that you've done, I've had to do it. I had to do it a lot more than maybe you do. Forgive ourselves for our mistakes. And if we will learn that, we can walk in healing. We can walk in a new life. We can have a new start. And we can go into a bright future. We can live hopeful every day. I know it sounds like a pipe dream. But I'm here to tell you. God has that plan for you. A plan to bless you. To prosper you. And to be there with you every step of the way. And give you a new chance. But the choice is up to you. I know some of things are harder than others. I recognize that. And I understand. But today... I want to give you that opportunity to do exactly what I've talked about today. I would like you all to stand to your feet if you would. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, right now, God, you see all over this place today, there are many people, and we've been in all these categories. We've been in the category of needing forgiveness. We've been in the category category of needing to give forgiveness. We've been in the category of needing to forgive ourselves. And Lord, I pray that today that you would help all of us to recognize that in our life. All heads are bowed and no one's looking around. If you'd say, Pastor Bob, you know what? I need to forgive. I don't know how. Maybe you don't know how, I don't know, or maybe you're saying, I know how, but I just haven't been able to step into it, but I need forgiveness. If you're here today and you say, I need forgiveness, you know, I'd like you just to raise your hand and put it right back down. I'm going to pray for you right where you stand. I see that hand. Thank you. Yes, I see that hand. I see that hand. Thank you. And I'm going to pray for you that you can give forgiveness and that you can also receive forgiveness. The Bible says it very clearly that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The Bible says if you ask for forgiveness, you can have it from Him instantly. The Bible says that He will wash all your sins away if you will ask Him to forgive you of those sins. The Bible goes on to say if you will believe that Jesus died upon the cross and you believe that He was raised from the dead, that you can be saved. If you're here today to say, Pastor Bob, I don't feel like I'm right with God, and I want to be right with God. For the rest of my life, I want to be right with God. I want to honor God, and I'm willing to ask God to forgive me. I'm willing to, I do believe he died upon the cross and rose from the dead, and I want to make him the Lord of my life. If that's you here today, and you want to be a Christian. You're not, even, you're not sure if you're a Christian, but you want to make sure you're right with God, and you want to be a Christian. I'm going to, I'm going to have you pray along with me this prayer. But before I do... Would you acknowledge that to just me? All heads are bowed. No one's looking around, please. Would you say, Pastor Bob, I want to I wanna be a Christian. I want to make things right between me and God. I want to ask him for forgiveness. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand and put it back down. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. I want to be right with God. I want to make him the Lord. Yes, I want to make him the Lord of my life. Amen. Let's pray together. If you uh, repeat this prayer with me, it's, you know, the words themselves are not necessarily, no, there's no magic in it. It's, it's about your faith in your heart and about you believing the prayer. So if you believe this prayer and you want to make it a part of your life, uh, if you just repeat after me and pray with me, but make it your own prayer, would you say, Jesus, I love you. I need you in my life. I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins. I ask you to wash my sins away. I believe you died upon the cross. 
And I believe you rose again. And I want you to be the Lord of my life for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. That's good. The Lord, I clap and praise you. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, you see these, God, that have wanted to be able to forgive. There's things in their life that they just, they, they've had a hard time forgiving. They've had a hard time moving into the new blessing. I pray, God, right now, you would begin to move them forward in forgiveness. I ask you to soften their heart. And God, some way they would just let it go and let you deal with it, God. It's your job to deal with them. It's your job. And Lord, I just pray, God, right now that you would help us, God, to let it go and trust you and begin the new life you have for us. For those here that are having a hard time forgiving themselves for the mistakes and the things they've done, I ask God right now you would help them to forgive themselves. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody does stump, stupid stuff. But God, the future is bright if we can just trust you and forgive others and forgive ourselves. And in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray forgiveness would rule and reign in all of our lives. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen.